If you jump while sprinting, you go 26% faster. But why? Is it because of friction? No, without friction you wouldn't be able to walk. But it just keeps getting weirder. Did you know that moving at a 45 degree angle is actually 2% faster than moving at a 0 degree angle? Why does nobody talk about those things? To find the answers, I head to the Minecraft parkour wiki, because apparently parkour needed a wiki. Here are all of the formulas, as well as you can read what influences your speed when moving. You have the movement multiplier, which depends whether you're sprinting, walking, sneaking, or not doing anything. You have the effects multiplier, which depends on what speed potion or slowness potion you have on. And the slipperiness multiplier, which is different depending on where you are, so it's basically friction. And the formulas are actually recursive formulas, because your movement speed depends on what your movement speed was one tick ago. So let's break it down. In the ground speed you have just the momentum and the acceleration. The momentum depends of your previous speed multiplied by the friction and multiplied by air resistance. Doesn't help that in school they told you to ignore friction and air resistance on all problems. Here your friction and air resistance are the most important part. If you ignore friction you move almost 5 times faster and if you also ignore air resistance your speed just goes to infinity. Drag is very simplified by making you lose 9% of your speed every tick always. And the friction depends where you are. If you are in air there is no friction, if you're on the ground, it just makes you lose 40% of your speed every tick. But every tick you also add the acceleration, which depends of the movement multiplier, times the effects multiplier, times the inverse of the friction to the power of 3. Wait a second, that would mean more friction equals more speed. Then why does jumping make you faster? The formula makes sense. If you're falling or levitating, you accelerate slower, ignoring the implication that you are able to accelerate without touching the ground. In real life, the only way to do that would be to swim through air. Your maximum speed mid-air is marginally faster than on the ground. But as you can see on this graph, in the green you have the speed when levitating and in the blue you have the speed while on the ground. Reaching that maximum speed in air takes longer and the difference between it and the speed on the ground is honestly negligible. So to answer why sprint jumping is faster, you need to understand exactly what happens when you jump. Fortunately, this website even provides the source code, which is perfect. So this whole function, just to sum it up, triggers this dot jump whenever you press space and this dot jump sets your vertical motion to 0.42 and also multiplies it by whatever jump boost potion you have and this part is what we actually care about apply sprint jump boost after you jump if you are sprinting it adds 0.2 speed times whatever rotation you're facing to your horizontal motion now why is this in the source code? I can't answer that, you would have to ask the developers. Maybe they just really like jumping and so they wanted to make everyone jump more often by giving you a speed boost every time you jump. But wait, it's already established that sprint jumping is 26% faster than sprinting, not 20%. And that's because it's a recursive formula. I made a graph to illustrate it. In the blue you can see normal sprinting speed. It's reaching some maximum speed and then staying there, and in the red you can see the speed of you while you jump. As you can see, every time you jump it goes up by a lot, and then slowly levels out. Don't panic just yet, this is the same formula as you saw before. I use signum the same way you would use an if statement in programming. My favorite programming language is math. On a flat surface you jump every 12 ticks, so I apply the sprint jump boost every 12 ticks. And to find how much faster sprint jumping is compared to sprinting, you would have to take the average of your speed in all 12 of these ticks and then divide it by your sprinting speed. And that's what I did. It's not 26% faster, but who cares? There's a second question that I want to answer. It's why you move 2% faster when you move diagonally at a 45 degree angle. Fortunately there's an article on that too and we even have the source code. As you can see there are only 65,000, this is basically 2 to the power of 16 angles that you can be facing in Minecraft. The way this math is done is such that it 
doesn't eat all of your RAM trying to calculate exactly where you are facing, it just approximates it. You see, your horizontal movement is always converted to movement in the z-axis and movement in the x-axis using trigonometry. And so, due to floating point imprecision, half angles exist. Your rotation is not an exact circle, it's more like a, like a Minecraft circle. Which is different from a normal circle because not all radiuses are equal. So moving at a 45 degree angle, for example, would be slightly faster than moving at a 0 degree angle. So should you be running at a 45 degree angle if you want to be as fast as possible? It depends. If you are on a horse or using a speed 2 potion, yes, that's actually gonna make you faster. But just sprinting at a 45 degree angle is still slower than just sprint jumping. Oh, but why don't you just, you know, sprint jump at a 45 degree angle? Because it's actually impossible to sprint jump at 45 degree angle, you see? I mentioned the sprint jump boost, the 0.2 speed that you gain whenever jumping. That boost does not apply in the direction you're going. It applies in the direction you are facing. And so it creates a different angle, which is not 45 degrees. And whatever this angle is, if you look at our square circle, square call, it actually makes you slower to sprint jump at a whatever this angle is. This is the hypothetically fastest way to run. You may not like it, but it allows you to do 5 block jumps on a flat surface if you're using Optifine Fast Math, which makes the floating point imprecision even higher. Let's go back to these formulas for one moment. ET depends of what effects you're using. So speed potions will make ET bigger. And as you can see, in airspeed, there is no ET. Meaning, if you're mid-air, your potion effect does not matter. Speed 1 makes you only 20% faster, so it's not that important. With speed 1, sprint jumping is still faster, because it's, you know, 26% faster. But speed 2 makes you 40% faster, which is better than the 26% you get from sprint jumping. So it's more optimal to just sprint whenever you have a speed 2 potion. And you, you probably already knew that sprint jumping with a speed 2 potion actually slows you down. But if you're not sprint jumping, that means you can go back to moving at a 45 degree angle. So if you're using a speed 2 potion, you can move at a 45 degree angle and get that 2% bonus speed. 2% is not much. But let's say you're chasing someone and you both have a speed 2 potion. If you use the 45 degree angle and your opponent doesn't know about it, you're gonna catch up to him. And he's probably going to call you a cheater. But there is one situation where the speed boost is not 2%, but it's actually 41%, it's, you know, times square root of 2. And it's when you're crouching. Not sure why, but when you're crouching, the square call just becomes straight up a square. And, you know, it's 45 degree angle. It's like the game doesn't do any trigonometry whenever you're crouching. And that's a mistake I see people make very often. Whenever you're crouching and bridging, do it at a 45 degree angle. It's significantly faster. In conclusion, if you want to be fast, jump as much as possible. That's why head hitters make you so fast, because you can jump even faster than 12 ticks. And the 45 degree angle is only viable when you're crouching or using a speed 2 potion. Subscribe to the like button and video my YouTube channel. Bye!